Hi, this is Zach here, and I decided to make this video simply because um, anybody that's new to Airsoft, I think they need the correct information, and I'm not exactly a pro. I'm pretty new myself, two months probably, somewhere within that range. Um, but I decided to make this video because I think websites do a horrible job in most cases. Um, the best website for kind of displaying is Airsoft GI, how to show you what to do, what to get. But a lot of them, I think that they could definitely educate the airsoft new people um, people just don't get the right kind of information they're looking at products they buy something they get it home they have to return it for whichever reason so we'll talk about this and I'm gonna make some funny little things and talk and talk my spew on it and help you out if you're new then you be glad you came here um, Again, I'm not a professional, but I definitely can give my input, my opinion, and that's what it is. Uh, most of the stuff will pretty much be true of what I'm saying anyways. If it's my opinion and it doesn't fall true, well, it's, I said it was opinionated. I didn't mean what I'm telling you is bad. Okay, so um, first thing, I've got my first purchase, my G&G &G, uh, Blowback M4 rifle, which is in this gun case. Um, this gun case, it says Gun Guard, made by Plano, um, that's P-L-A-N-O, and this is a pretty nice gun case for 20 bucks. Uh, retail, I think it's about 40 I got it for half that price from Big Five. You can get this probably in any good gun, gun store or something similar to it. Um, this is a pretty nice case. It has one, two, three, four, five holes around it for locks. However, I will tell you, if you get this same case from experience, you can easily open these up and still reach your hand in and grab something else. So, in that case, you will need to put the locks on the edges, at least. So you've got two edges and then the middle. And you can see this thing is huge. Um, I love this thing because it's pretty durable. It's pretty hard. It's pretty nice on the inside, and it, it wasn't really high-priced. Um, it's good to carry around real quick and if you want to put your key somewhere that nobody will know where it is or um, have a key on your keychain. Now, the locks that I got, <clears throat> I actually bought two of them. Came with a four pack and two keys. I actually bought two of these. Uh, There's 644 from Target. This is a master lock. It's says tough. And it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty nice. Um, you'd want to buy probably a pack like this just for in case. Uh, like I said, if, it's, if you're getting this, you're definitely going to want them on the edges. Um, the reason I don't do that is I don't have anyone in the house that's going to get inside these besides me. So no problem there. I don't have some little kid that I have to worry about. But if you do, um, definitely make sure that it's locked up. And you can notice how big this is. You're probably only going to be able to hide it underneath your bed or up like this in your closet or something similar so you put up sideways you don't really want to do that um, you can put it lying down like this reason being is because it will move a little bit but let's go ahead and open this up <laughs> so people might ask well why do you have a lock then if you really don't need it eh, just felt like it just in case, you never know. Besides, someone sees you with the locks. People that usually steal stuff, they kind of, if they see something locked up, they usually don't take a second thought about trying to get to it. Um, however, like I said, they usually don't. Okay, so uh, let's show this the best way we can. I'll put this on the table. But on the inside of this gun case, it comes with some nice padded foam. I mean, it's not highest quality, but it will do the job. This job pretty well. I'm going to show you what this looks like. And this time we have the pool table open. Why? So I was playing some pool. <clears throat> okay, so we've got the gun case. There it is, guys. Excuse me, there's the gun case. You can't probably hear me when I'm behind the camera, so there's the gun case.
take some time to open the camera and move it down so I can show and do my little spew from over here. <clears throat> Okay, that way you don't have to worry and you can see the gun. Um, as you can see, mine has an attached silencer, which is by ICS. It's really nice. Um, the only thing I do not like, which doesn't really bother me, is the way it attaches. It attaches on there very nicely. And the reason it attaches is only a flash hider has, you can see, a whole um, loop here on both of these two and it attaches to that and on top there's a straightaway. That's how this attaches and I'll show in the video of course. And see, it fits nicely. Um, just to know that the silencer really doesn't add a silence effect to your gun when you're playing airsoft, the sound comes from the gearbox. Okay, so, um, this is a G&G, &G, GR16, I believe, M4, carbine, rifle, with an attractable stock. And, you know, this is a, a pretty good buy. This is a pretty good buy. Um, as you can see on this gun, the scope is kind of low, just to kind of give you an idea. When you buy an M4 or an M16, I try to remind you that the end is tall, um, and usually it doesn't come off depending on how much you pay for the gun. Um, sometimes they do that allow you to or not. You'd have to hack that off basically. You don't want to do that though. So <clears throat> you could probably change out the barrel but this is for beginners so you notice that it doesn't fit. Now you kind of have to know that yourself to see it but you can see this is a pretty nice good gun. It has blowback here so when it shoots this goes like that. Adjustable hop up inside. Also this closes and you can open it with the charging handle. It has an afford assist. This button right here is only to release the, compre the spring on the inside. It gets compressed. Um, usually when you're in auto, um, semi will usually uncompress that when you dry fire it. Uh, but you, after a game, don't hold down for a long automatic, shooting a long automatic time, and then push the forward assist immediately. It could you could cause a lot of stress inside your gearbox. What you want to do is you play, switch to semi, wait a little bit, and then hold, hold the, gear, the port assist to push it in and it'll leave the, string, the spring on the inside. If you don't do that, after you're done playing airsoft, you will leave that spring compressed and many people will tell you um, what happens later when you go to play it the next couple months. Oh, it doesn't shoot as far because you've got to get a new spring on the inside. Okay, so we're going to keep this simple because I'm not going to go over professional stuff, but that's pretty much the gun. The battery goes in here um, just to show that I can take that off. It did not come with a scope. Most guns don't come with a scope or silencer. Um, and you can see this is by G&G. That is pretty thick plastic. Um, pretty thick. So knowing that helps you because if you buy a $60 gun, what is going to happen? Let's move the camera a little bit here and my laptop because I'm getting sick of looking at this. So you can see me. Okay, there we go. Um, So you're, you buy a $60 gun and you're going to notice on YouTube a lot, it'll look pretty similar to this, but the build quality is what's so different. This is 
This gun did not come with a metal magazine. I believe it was a uh, kind of plastic. This is the plastic version for one sixty nine ninety nine, and um, it's okay. I like it. I like the blowback on it. It's actually one of my further, really distant, nice shooting rate of fire guns. Um, also the cheapest, but uh, it doesn't feel as nice. I would rather have metal. Um, so this magazine is a classic army. It's 28 bucks. It's metal. It's really nice. You can tell it's high capacity. Um, don't want to skimp on quality there, but let's get straight to the gun because I'm talking way too long. Huh? All right. So as you can see, this is really the dealer's fault. They'll display this gun, and sometimes they allow you to buy the battery with it or not. Um, in that case, they hopefully give you a battery that fits, and they hopefully tell you what fits, but they usually don't. Um, so this is a real big problem, I think, by the dealer, which that should be their responsibility to educate, but just because of that, sometimes somebody else has to do it. Um, there are many other videos besides this one. So you can see how would you know the battery, what kind of battery fits in there, what kind of connector. First off, it's a small connector. Um, to explain that, you're just going to have to know when you open it. Uh, it's <clears throat> usually not at just any store like, um, um, excuse me, if you go to Office Max or, excuse me, not Office Max, oh, my brain this morning. If you go to Radio Shack or um, some local hardware store, sometimes they don't have this connector, so um, even to find a conversion, you're going to want to usually buy from the website because if they ain't telling you, you're going to want a small to large, a large to small. Just because when you get that gun, you don't really know sometimes. Unless somebody is supposed to review online, that kind of helps you. But as you can see in here, it's kind of a tight fit and it needs a butterfly type battery um, or nunchuck that comes out like this. Uh, so I'll put part of the battery here, part of the battery on this side, stick it in, close it up. It's a tight fit. So <clears throat> if you don't know that, the battery could be in the front or in the back, depending on if you got a fixed stock. It's usually in the back. A fixed stock gun is going to be much bigger. It's going to be like that with a big um, fixed position. It's going to be a lot harder plastic. But what's good about having a fixed stock gun is the battery goes in the back and it's usually a huge compartment. So you can get a nice big battery, throw it in there and don't even usually have to worry um, about fitting it. You have to have use probably a big large connector. But again, that's why I suggest getting a large and small one. And if you can't get it in town, definitely buy it online. They're only a few dollars. So um, let's get straight into this gun. <clears throat> plastic here, but it's a nice hard plastic. You can see how thick it is. It's very thick. Um, just to kind of let you know, this is, if this was a $60 gun and this was cheap plastic right here, you can literally break it with your fingers. You just put your finger right there and snap it off. At the end of this, you could easily just snap it off. Um, you'll be on YouTube, you're watching somebody run with their gun and they trip, <laughs> breaks easily. This is not one of those guns that's going to break easily. I'd have to fall on this thing really hard, all my weight, throw it, be pissed off. This is not a gun that's going to break down like that. Um, it's very hard, very well built. But I would buy from ICS instead of G&G. &G. The G&G &G would be good to start with. Um, there's just a little bit of complications with it. Um, don't get me wrong, they're a nice company. Um, they make nice stuff. Uh, but if you want to make sure that you don't have any problems, you probably want to go a little higher end. Um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest a $1,500 gun like Systema, but definitely something from ICS I would suggest. Now, some of the G&Gs, they work a little bit, bit better where they don't have that kind of problem like this. I'm going to just tell you. The selector switch, where you put safety... Um, semi and auto. When you're on safety, sometimes you can pull the trigger. Right now I can't. Sometimes you put it in semi, you can't pull the trigger. 
and sometimes <clears throat> between the two it won't change. It will stay locked up, it will fire on safety and you can't get a change when you switch between those two. The only way to get past this, and this happens on GNG guns like this one, is going into auto and then moving it back to what you want. The other problem is the motor gets pretty warm. Um, it doesn't really have a heat sink um, and it doesn't really get that air that hot out of there. Um, so when you're shooting it, if you're shooting it quite a lot on automatic, you will feel it. And I'm sure it will start to build up um, on its life like that. So having an ICS weapon, they usually put some heat sink parts in there. Um, also the motor is the best stock, period. That's what you're going to hear all the time. Uh, this one's not bad. It's a very good gun um, for the price. It's definitely a great buy. As far as the selector switch, I do not know if that's going to be too much of a hassle for somebody. Uh, definitely if this was a real gun and it was in safe and it shot, there would be a huge lawsuit and this gun would be qu quickly changed. Being that it's an airsoft gun, maybe not really. But other than that, um, this is a great weapon. It's a newer one. It, the older GNGs, this doesn't open with the charging handle. But does for this one. This one has blowback. This one's just a nice weapon, but it's plastic. If you can get this in metal, I highly suggest it. Why? Because a metal gun feels good. It's heavy. If you're younger, you can't hold something heavy, um, then the plastic version is not bad. This is a pretty good gun. Um, so you've got your 60 bucks, and you decide, I'm going to buy me a rifle. <sighs> what are you going to do with your 60 bucks? Let me tell you. Take your 60 bucks out of your pocket, your wallet, whatever, put it in your hand, fluff it around like this, smell it, pet it, and then throw it in the trash. Because that's exactly what's going to happen when you get your $60 rifle, you're going to pet it, smell it, and then throw it in the trash. Why? Because they're so cheaply made. Um, I usually suggest you're going to have to spend, as a beginner, you really should suggest and look at you're going to be spending $500. That's just the bottom line. And I don't mean the $500 for a gun. Your gun is going to be two to $300 somewhere usually. You're going to need certain things you must have. High quality BBs. You're probably going to want quite a bit of them. The best place I have found, period, for BBs and the best price, Air Splat. Um, $15,000 for $24. Bucks. That's not with tax and shipping included, but 24 bucks. If you get the free shipping and you don't live in California, you've got a heck of a better deal than I do. Um, they are totally really good. I don't know if they are the best quality, but they definitely will work. Um, so just for a gun like this, 0.2 grams. Uh, so they have the best. Now, in the past, um, I suffered a problem with receiving a gun that was used. Um, to best explain this, and I'm sure this happens to people from any company, any company, uh, whether it's something that happens somehow way, the gun was received like this. Now, you go on and you read ratings from other, um, excuse me, dealers, uh, other than just Air Splatters, Airsoft GI, blah, 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 Airsoft Extreme, and you see that it happens to some other customers. Um, What's going on, I'm not sure if things that are bought somehow is messed up, touched by someone else before the dealers get it out. I'm not sure how that really goes on. Um, sure, over the years, it has been better. From what I understand, you know, Airsoft GI opens up their stuff, shoots it, chronos it, makes sure that the gun works before they ship it to you. The only reason I would buy from Airsoft GI is because it's very expensive. It's it's more expensive than almost any of the others. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe they just make more money. Who knows? But for me, there are some things on there, on their website, a lot cheaper than other websites. So you can kind of just compare what you want to get. They have nice slings for cheaper than other websites. Um, they have nicer batteries than sometimes other websites. And so I would kind of 
choose between them and buy from this and buy from that. Um, so talking about that, if you got your $60 gun, <clears throat> be happy with it because it's probably going to break within the next few hours that you shoot it. <laughs> you're going to have to put it in your closet and you'll never be able to repair it for most part. Um, reason being it's so crappy made. End of story there. So what do you do with your 60 bucks? Put it in a jar. Hide it from somebody, of course. You don't want them to take it. But keep putting money in the jar until you can get that money. Now let's talk about that $500. Why $500? Smart chargers. Um, a smart charger will charge your battery. And usually a really good smart charger, $100 or more, is what you're just going to have to get. It's a pretty much, I'm going to say, a must-have. There are some that are about 50 bucks, a little bit less. But the thing doesn't stop charging your battery still. It'll just tell you it's charging and it's done. But if no one's there to unplug it, you're doing damage to your battery. Also, the more expensive battery chargers, they can charge a heck of a lot faster. They can charge uh, the proper cells that you have. To count the cells of your battery, you just look at how many batteries are inside of it, basically. Usually there's seven to eight, um, sometimes more. Um, I have a 10 cell battery that I can't charge properly on my Kong Power, which is a $100 charger, because it doesn't charge a 10 cell. It does charge an eight cell. It does seem to work well. I don't know other than that. But um, having a good smart charger, you can definitely not worry about buying different types of batteries and getting them charged. Um, what kind of batteries should we go with? NICAD? Uh, probably not because people are going to say we have to just charge it and sometimes the charger will do that for you automatically but uh, you want to go with the NIMH for the most part. Um, LiPo, why not go with LiPo people are asking and talking about you will read and find out that it does cause stress on the gearbox and people are having their guns break down from the stress and you don't want to go too much voltage. You probably want to stick with a 9.6 but here's what I would suggest. So you get your nice gun. What about the battery? What about the battery? If you've got the carbine, you're more than likely going to have to go inside here or in the stock if it's a fixed stock. But you better find out. You better look up. You don't want to buy something and it doesn't fit and you're going to be totally pissed off. Um, you're going to try to make it fit and I'm going to tell you it will not fit. You never, don't ever modify the batteries. You don't know how well they're made. You don't know what's wrong. With, you don't know how they're going to go together. So just take that advice. Um, this one, you'd be better off buying two small nunchuck or butterfly, batter, excuse me, butterfly batteries that fit like this. Um, why two? Because you can easily exchange it and it's small enough to fit in there. Um, you get something too big that's really hard to put in there, you just have a hard time putting it in. You can't switch it later and you can just continue. Now when you buy two batteries, What's good about that is that you have backup battery. So this is really a good thing because you're buying two batteries. You don't know if one battery might not be working. You have another battery to test. Well, I know it's not the battery now. My gun's probably not shooting, or maybe I'm not charging my battery. Um, that was my fault. When I bought a Kong Power Smart Charger, I didn't know how to charge it, my batteries correctly, and I didn't know you had to hold the stop start button to start charging. So there are things you have to know. Um, also, sometimes the wires inside the gun or where the connection is or where your small to large con to my connectors are, sometimes they're a little bit not sticky on the metal. So what that means is when you plug it in, the battery in, a little piece of the wire goes back or too far forward and it doesn't touch through the gun properly. And because of that, when you go to fire it, nothing happens and you assume, oh my gosh, the battery doesn't work. No, sometimes you need to just look at the wire, make sure that it's touching correctly on all the, the there's two prongs in there and make sure that they fit in. Um, <clears throat> also to know is the fuse. From videos that I've seen and heard, you can usually just swap out the fuse or um, have the metal piece of the wire touch the other metal piece to check and see if it's just the fuse. Um, in most cases, I don't think this is going to be the fuse because it's going to have to blow and you're going to have to put too much battery power or you're going to have to um, 
maybe break it somehow, dropping your gun, throwing your gun, who knows through shipping. But it's usually not a problem there. Um, <clears throat> so one thing I should suggest, the $500, just finish that. You need the BBs, you need the smart charger, you need the dual batteries, and then you're going to need the gun. So if you want to get extra magazine, that's up to you. I don't really use it because how we play, you don't ever get to really go through your magazine. You either die or you quickly win. Um, it's really fun, great to play airsoft. So, uh, and if, you, if you're buying an M4, this is what will be on the top. You can carry it easily. Sight looks pretty fine. I mean, of course, a dot sight would be better, but like I said, make sure that you check the end of the barrel right here. If this is too high, this is not going to work very well. Um, so it's up to you to, to make sure you don't make that mistake. <clears throat> Checking your gun. Okay, so we already talked about the $500. Sorry that took so long. I sometimes talk too much too far. Too far. How to check your gun when you first get it. Because you need to know, is your gun working? Do I need to return it? Is something wrong? Is it used? Is it been messed up? You need to find this out. Soon as you get your shipment, first things I suggest as a new person to Airsoft because you don't know what's going to happen, record your unboxing um, just so in case the box is messed up on the inside. There's proof that, look, it was destroyed, something I didn't do. You could see the tape wasn't messed up. It was purely an unboxing. Um, also, check your gun. Make sure you look to see that everything is in the box. Um, there should be a manual in most cases included, but you want to look around your gun, make sure there's no real bad scratches, anything that looks like it's really been worn and torn. If you see a BB in there, or excuse me, a magazine loaded in there, and there's BBs in it, turn, return it immediately. Immediately. You just, you trust me, you complain, you say whatever you have to over the phone, you write bad reviews, return it immediately. You do not want to stay with something that someone has been firing like that. Um, if a dealer is going to test fire your gun, they're going to put everything back properly. It, more than likely, a customer had already fired that gun and put it back in the box, and you don't want to go through that hassle. Trust me, trust me, trust me. So you need to get your battery working right away. With a smart charger, you don't have to worry about those eight hours to get it charged. You can get it charged pretty quickly, and then you can test out your gun. How you test out your gun, make sure there's no BBs you're putting inside, none in the magazine, don't even put the magazine in. Load up the battery, dry fire it, put it on semi first, if it fires, automatic. Now some people will say, don't ever put your hand or your eye near the end of the barrel. But if you're 100% positive there's no BBs and you even took your jamming rod if it came with one and you put it down there and you see it gets to the end of your <coughs> bottom of the magazine feeder and you can see that there's no way that there's a BB in there, then you can go ahead and put your hand near the um, piece because I suggest checking to see if air comes. You could even put a piece of paper and see the paper move. You don't have to put your hand there. Um, it's just safer that way. <clears throat> so if you see air come out, chances are it's a good working gun. Put on auto, fire it a couple times, pull it down, check to see if you smell anything, the motor, is it hot? and then take it out and very soon shoot it because make sure your battery is fully charged too you don't want your gearbox getting locked up in here um, because you want to make sure your gun works if it works you don't have to worry about returns and usually I'm going to tell you when you buy a gun like this chances of you returning it are ass nine there's going to be a restocking fee policy sometimes there's a no returns whatsoever policy no refunds, and this is why I won't buy it from Airsoft GI when it comes to weapons. More expensive, no refunds. You're stuck with what you get. There is just absolutely no way they will allow it. They probably might do it to just keep you as a customer, but that's in their policy. If that's in the policy, that is not good. That is not good. I don't know why you would even attempt to do that. I've been in business for very long, and if you have that policy at a local store, chances are 
those customers may not come back if they get something they do not like. Um, and that will just be a real bad word of mouth. So it's a terrible policy, just absolutely terrible. That's why I won't buy from Airsoft GI. Um, they may be good, but you have to get rid of that policy. Uh, just not going to take chances. And I'm sure some people would probably tell me the same. Other people that are fanboys and everything, I love Airsoft GI, I love Airsoft GI. That's you. That's not me. Okay, so that's pretty much, I think, explained everything. You can later pimp out your weapons, but once you get your gun, you want to kind of look at and see how you can pimp it out. Obviously, you can tell there's no way I can get a grip on this here. I'd have to have some other kind of attachment or replace this piece. Um, and then you look and you see, well, I can get a sight. You can usually get that at a regular gun store even because these rails fit real sights or actually they're all just real sights to be honest. I mean they're usually just a real gun sight on an airsoft weapon. Um, so no problem there. Any questions, comments, whatever, give them to me. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that would be nice to know. Uh, brands that I would purchase from definitely uh, ICS, G and G, Systema. Those are way expensive, though. Um, <clears throat> what else? Deep Fire should be a really good brand. They come with titanium gears on the inside of their gun. That's not going to break the heck down very easily. So, um, just looking at the magazine real quick to make sure we got everything we need to know here for the time being. Oh, motor adjustment. Well, that would be a different story. But other than that, I think that's everything you need to know. Um, when you're shooting your high cap, make sure that you wind up the wheel and you can see the BBs up at the top. Um, and you put it in and you load it. Now, these G&G weapons, the end of the flash hider, and I'm sure it happens quite often, it looks like it's broken. It's got like a chip look. That is actually the gun like that. Um, so people will complain, but you know it's the dealer's fault for not putting that on their website. It should be labeled right in front on the weapon. If you want to stop getting those questions, stop getting those phone calls, put it on your website. Put what batteries work with your gun. If you won't do it, pay someone that will do it. Yeah, I'm pointing because I would help you out. <laughs> um, so I was talking about the... Uh, how to load it properly. So you got your gun. Once you get the BBs loaded up, push it to here. It clicks. Won't come down. Make sure you do that because otherwise it's going to fall into the ground, and that'll be your own fault. You may wind up a little bit more, but usually you don't have to. Now at this point, if you just fire a little bit or you don't fire at all and you pull the clip out, BBs are going to fall um, simply because the way these are designed, the BBs. To these airsoft guns. See, here's your top right here. The spot that gets the BBs is like up here. So there's a couple BBs that are stuck in between from that spot to there. So when you unload your gun, or excuse me, you pull out the magazine, these BBs fall. And you're like, well, is that normal? Yes, it is normal. That's why you fire and you fire and you fire until it stops firing. You hear a different sound. You won't see any BBs come out. Then you can usually pull it out and nothing will fall. There will be no BBs or anything. Or what you simply can do is wind it up some more. Fire, 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 fire. Wind up some more. Fire, 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 fire. And that's pretty much all you need to know there. Um, listen for sounds in your gearbox. Know what to look out for. That'd be for a different video. Let's talk about going inside of it. I don't know because I haven't been really inside these things and. From watching other people taking part, I would be telling you it's probably not hard, but it's going to be a lot of work. Um, I've honestly thought, why do dealers not do this? <clears throat> when you go to buy computers, you can actually build the computer for a less price than you do buying it from somewhere. Now, how is that possible? It's because I think computers have been around for a very long time. Airsoft guns you can't do this. You try to buy the receivers. This is the top receiver, this is the bottom receiver. Make sure they're metal if you want to get a nice feel gun. Um, oh, I didn't really discuss that. This is going to more likely be plastic. 
plastic, sometimes metal if it's got rails, metal, um, metal or plastic for the rails, sometimes it's metal, and then the receiver is either going to be metal or plastic. It goes the top and bottom here. So what they call the upper and lower receiver. This is almost always plastic. Um, but what you're really looking for is a metal receiver, a metal gearbox, and you're set to go. These things you can buy and put back on if they break down. Chances of them breaking down with a brand like this, not really going to happen. Um, there's videos taking a hammer and hitting the plastic to show you how hard it is. It's hard. That's what you want because in case you're running, you accidentally slip and throw the gun down, it doesn't break in your hands. It doesn't break when you shoot it in your hands either. Um, so I think that was all discussed there, but the market that I would like to see, and it'll probably be within the next 10 years, um, I wanted to, just for the heck of it, take my own project and buy pieces to build. Buy a receiver bottom, buy a receiver top, buy a gearbox, by the front rail, um, excuse me, front end, barrel, hop up. Um, you start talking about all these pieces you need a magazine catch, a bolt catch, a selector switch, um, a charging handle, a stock. So you start going on and on. You, you need a trigger handle, you need the bottom piece that's the metal plate, sometimes a heat sink. Um, then you need the motor that goes inside the gear, the uh, trigger. And so it just goes on and on. To build a gun like that, that is nice, is going to cost you seven to $800. You'd be better off buying a good brand, g, &G ICS, or Systema, or Deep Fire. Those are the good brands, I'd suggest. And then pimping them out. Why? Because they're probably priced so high for each piece. Now, when I go to New Age and I buy computer stuff, it is not priced so high. They do that, I think, because, again, we've had computers for a long time. You can get it definitely cheaper. But people take the time to make business out of it. They buy all the parts and put it together and make something freaking crazy, something cool. And then they offer good warranties because they know out of their hands, they made something that works. They looked at it, they teched it, and said, well, here we go. Here's a nice 500 let's say 300 to 500 gun, which you can't get for that price, sorry. It's going to be like 700 to 900 dollars for a custom built gun that someone took their time and did nice out of it. But in the next 10 years, I'd hope to see that. I'd love to make a 200 to 500 dollar gun, completely good brand, uh, quality parts, and it would just be fun. You could make a website, you could start some business, you could go into wholesale once you get your business made. It would be a great hobby. Um, it is definitely, definitely some market out there, trust me. If people like to build computers, they will like to build stuff like this. And people that, that like real guns, chances are since it's, they have to go through the paperwork and they are not a gun, a gun selling owner, they don't own a real gun business, chances are they may want to just take the fun out of building an airsoft weapon because it's pretty darn close. It's pretty darn close. Um, <clears throat> I've actually grabbed a real one of these and felt it and looked at it and I will tell you right away I thought airsoft weapon but it was not an airsoft weapon because these kinds of guns that are more expensive like this they are so close to replica that um, you look at it and you go airsoft weapon <laughs> that's me <laughs> thinking that yeah because I'm well, I like airsoft but at the same time it just felt like it it looked like it I was like looks exactly the same what the heck um, yeah so we'll end it there guys I hope I gave out all the best stuff I could guns that you don't want to buy let me kind of put that out real quick um, electric pistols I'm actually still waiting on mine they are pretty rare the really good ones we're talking about sixty plus dollars up um, I got these from crazy NC man and I haven't been able to use them yet because I don't have them in my position yet I'm still waiting but they are harder to get, not as built like these are. These are monstrous, great. If you're going to buy a gun, buy an AEG. You could buy gas if you like to, but remember, you're going to have to refill it. You get gas for your magazines, drop magazine breaks, you're really screwing yourself over. you got to have gas on you all the time. It just goes to whatever your, ref your preference is, and more people 
from my understanding, by electronic. It's very much easier to maintain a lot less problems with electronics. So we're talking about AEGs. Um, so yeah, we'll end up with there. If, if you need to know the difference between a spring gun and an electric gun, as semi, this would be da 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 da. Da, 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 versus spring, you have to cock it every time. So if you see something spring, you think, oh, I will, that might be good. Don't. It would just be for putting on your wall. And that's pretty much it. Okay, let's go. I'm done for now.